its knockouts, has some punching power. And we're going to take a look at it as it happened earlier this evening. It's a scheduled eight rounder. And uh, we're going to see what kind of thing Bobby Harris can bring to the table. Supervisor of Athletics. This is a Burns Kushner Lady Luck promotion. The officials assigned for this evening's exhibitions are the fight doctor Grubb, ringside physician, timekeeper Joe Moriello, and referees on a rotating basis, Gino Rodriguez and Mr. Sean Curtin. The next bout will be judged by Gary Merritt, David Hess, and Gordy Volkman. Our referee is Sean Curtin. Scheduled for eight rounds. In the red trunks, fighting out of the red corner, weighing 256 pounds from Natawash, Minnesota. Please welcome to the Quad Cities, Mr. Brian Sargent. His opponent in the black trunks, weighing 220 pounds from Worcester, Massachusetts, Mr. Bobby Harris. All right, we take a look there at Bobby Harris. See, that looks like Jimmy Birchfield in the corner of Bobby Harris. And it is, all the way from Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, used to work a little bit with Vinny Pazienza. Referee Sean Curtin giving instruction. Let's have a good one. Touch gloves, back to the Also working Bobby Harris's corner is uh, Jimmy Ispaduli, who's been with him since he was 12 years old. And... Uh, Recently, Harris uh, left promoter Bob Arum to come with Cedric Kushner. Nice to have him in the fold here at Heavyweight Explosion. We're coming to you from the mark in Moline, Illinois, round number one. Scheduled for eight rounds. And just for the record, Bobby Harris never seen round seven or eight. Never been past six. Had 10 knockouts in his 16 wins. Came out of the amateurs highly touted, John. In a pretty good amateur career, and uh, actually he could have really tried to hang around to make the Atlanta team. That was his dream, was to uh, fight for the United States at the Olympics. But uh, at the trials in 1991, prior to the Barcelona games, he had his uh, jaw broken. He said he just didn't want to risk Another injury and something freak happening. He decided to turn pro and go for it. Well, he's 23 years of age. He, sort of, he certainly could have gone in either direction, but he decided to turn pro back in July of 93, making his pro debut again on Muhammad Askai with a two-round knockout. Rattled off four straight KOs, then four straight distance fights. People started to question his punching power, but he seems to have set down on his punches again, and in his last fights he's he's won two straight knockouts decision two straight knockouts before that decision and two straight knockouts so not the biggest puncher but but a, definitely a sharp puncher who puts his shots together pretty well and he thought he was going to fight later in the evening arnie so i'm not sure he was prepared to come out this quickly uh he was the first bout of the evening And he's, he fought uh, during his amateur career. Buster Mathis Jr. defeated in the amateurs. Peter McNeely, I'm sure everybody remembers Peter McNeely from his Mike Tyson fame. I remember from the pizza commercials <laughs> myself. Yeah, he made quite a killing off Tyson, didn't he? And uh, Bobby Harris also uh, fought Shannon Briggs twice in the amateurs and split those two bouts. It's gonna be interesting to see though if Sargent can land something here. He's got a bit of punching power himself. He's got six knockouts in his eight wins. Well, if you stand in front of him and you get hit with those shots, you see Bobby Harris really putting his punches together pretty well. Sargent's never been stopped, so it'll be an interesting earmark here. See if Bobby Harris can put the first stop on his record. Under 30 seconds to go in round number one. We're scheduled for eight. Bobby Harris in the black shorts. Brian Sargent out of Minnesota. He's in the red shorts. You see Harris using just enough head movement at times to slip those punches. Although they're not exactly coming in punches. Oh. 
And you see the blood coming out of the nose. Oh, that's got to be killing a guy like Brian Sargent who comes into this fight obviously out of shape. Can't breathe through his nose because it's bleeding. He's got to be tired. Let's listen in the corner, Bobby Harris. That was Jimmy Espaduli, his trainer and manager. And we look at action here from round number one. Good hand speed from Bobby Harris, although I must tell you that tape was a little faster on the replay than real life. They can look from another angle. Good body work. And that's what and Ispaduli wants. He wants him to work on that uh, ample midsection, shall we say, and then go upstairs. <laughs> round number two, scheduled eight rounder. That's Brian Sargent. He's in the red shorts. Bobby Harris got a Worcester mass. He's in the black, 16 and 0, 10 knockouts. And just like Larry Donald, he wants to try to make some kind of a move here in the heavyweight division. Doesn't figure he's to get a title shot anytime soon, but nevertheless, he's got to get into that situation where he can get into the rankings and uh, maneuver himself in a position where he's a viable candidate and get a shot. Well, and you take a look at his level of competition, perhaps the most recognizable name at this point is a fighter like Will Hinton, who we saw this evening. Got a six-round decision win over, over Hinton. Um, a Ricky Sullivan. That's the level, that's about the highest level he's been at. Assuming that he wins this evening, he'll be 17-0. and 0. Who do you see? What kind of a level of fighter would you recommend him moving up to, John? Well, he, he's in a situation where, you know, why couldn't he take on a Jeremy Williams? I mean, he's really, he really needs to step it up a little bit. I think that would be a good opponent for him. I'm not so sure, you know, that fight would be made, but maybe even a Dan L. Nicholson. I think anything more than that, he might be biting off a little bit more than he could chew at this point. Certainly time, though, for a move up in, in caliber of a fighter and uh, the things he's trying to work on in the gym right now are his defense I mean uh, he has a habit of carrying that left hand low and you can see it right there Arnie and once you get into that habit it's a difficult one to break Oh, Southpaw would have a ball with him also been working on on improving his punching power as we got a minute to go in round number two, this is scheduled for eight. I'm Arnie Rosenthal along with John Saraceno. See, now he got hit with a right hand there be simply because his left was too low. And a fighter that's got a good right hand lead could take big advantage and to get more, again, a southpaw. Oh, but a good uppercut. Good combination by Harris. And Brian Sargent drops down. Face first. Gets back up. Looks huh? like the sequence was started with an uppercut. Tell you what, he's. He's Referee showing Sean that he's game. Sean Curtin sends him back in. He didn't ask him if he was okay. He didn't give him a chance <laughs> to quit. Oh, another and right another... uppercut, Arnie. Wow. On the button, John. Remember, there's no three knockdown rule in Illinois. This is the second knockdown. Sergeant gets to his feet slowly. Let's see if what Curtin asked him this time, and Curtin wisely waves it off. Well, actually, I, I think he looked at the fighter, and the fighter not, waved his head, nodded his head, no, I don't want it anymore. Bobby Harris improves the 17 and